Poemata Minora, Volume 2, by H. P. Lovecraft. Ode to Selene or Diana. Immortal moon and maiden splendor shine, dispense thy beams, divine Latona's child. Thy silver rays all grosser things define, and hide harsh truth in sweet illusion mild. In thy soft light, the city of unrest, that stands so squalid in thy brother's glare, throws off its habit and in silence blessed, becomes a vision sparkling bright and fair. The modern world, with all its care and pain, the smoky streets, the hideous clanging mills, face neath thy beams, Selene, and again, we dream like shepherds on Chaldea's hills. Take heed, Diana, of my humble plea, Convey me where my happiness may last. Draw me against the tide of time's rough sea, and let my spirit rest amid the past. To the old pagan religion. Olympian gods, how can I let he go, and pin my faith to this new Christian creed? Can I resign the deities I know for him who on a cross for man did bleed? How in my weakness can my hopes depend On one lone God, though mighty be his power? Why can Jove's host no more assistance lend To soothe my pain and cheer my troubled hour? Are there no dryads on these wooded mounts O'er which I oft in desolation roam? Are there no naiads in these crystal founts Nor nereids upon the ocean foam? Vast spreads the new, the older faith declines, the name of Christ resounds upon the air, but my racked soul in solitude repines and gives the gods their last received prayer. On the Ruin of Rome Lo dost thou lie, O Rome, neath the foot of the Teuton. Slaves are thy men, and bent to the will of thy conqueror. Whither hath gone, great city, the race that gave law to all nations? Subdued the east and the west, and made them bow down to thy consuls. Knew not defeat, but gave it to all who attacked thee. Dead, and replaced by these wretches who cower in confusion. Dead, they who gave us this empire to guard and to live in. Rome, thou didst fall from thy power with the proud race that made thee. And we, base Italians, enjoyed what we could not have builded. To Pan, seated in a woodland glen, by a shallow reedy stream, once I fell amusing when I was lulled into a dream. From the brook a shape arose, half a man and half a goat, hoofs it had instead of toes, and a beard adorned its throat. On a set of rustic reeds, sweetly played this hybrid man, not cared I for earthly needs, for I knew that this was Pan. Nymphs and satyrs gathered round to enjoy the lively sound. All too soon I woke in pain and returned to haunts of men, but in rural vales I'd fain live and hear Pan's pipes again. On the Vanity of Human Ambition Apollo, chasing Daphne, gained his prize, but lo, she turned to wood before his eyes. More modern swains at golden prizes aim and ever strive some worldly thing to claim. Yet tis the same as in Apollo's case, for once attained, the purest gold seems base. All that men seeks unworthy of the quest, yet seek they will, and never pause for rest. True bliss, methinks, a man can only find in virtuous life and cultivated mind. 